Protesters in Algeria helped bring down the last president. And they're equally unhappy with who might replace Abdelaziz Bouteflika. Tens of thousands boycotted Thursday's presidential election, choosing to chant, we want freedom instead. They're angry that the presidential candidates are closely linked to the old regime. No to the shameful election. We're against the gang. Long live the people. Demonstrators stormed two polling stations, including this one in the city of Beja. Ballot papers were destroyed, making it clear they thought this presidential election was a farce. More than 24 million people were eligible to vote, but less than half of them did. It's very important to be here. Algeria is free and independent. The blood of the martyrs will not be in vain. It's a new day. Results were slow to be announced, but four out of the five candidates running for president either claimed victory or said they were going through to a runoff in a couple of weeks. The campaign leader for one of the top two contenders, Abdel Majid Taboun, was quick to claim the former prime minister had won a majority. We'd like to thank the public for voting for Taboun, and we'd like to announce that he won 64% of the votes. The military-backed interim government sees the vote as one of the only ways to end 10 months of protests that forced President Abdelaziz Bouteflika to resign after two decades of rule. But Algerians rallying across the country every Friday are fed up with a stagnant oil-dependent economy, youth unemployment and rampant corruption. And they insist they'll continue protesting for a government free of the ruling elite. Sara Khairat, Al Jazeera. Well, let's take a closer look at this with Francis Giles, who's a senior researcher at the Barcelona Center for International Affairs, and he joins us now from Barcelona. Francis, let's start with the turnout. The Election Commission put it at just 33% two hours before polls closed. So millions really voted for another process here by refusing to cast ballots. Well, the first thing one must say is that nobody has any idea of what the real figure of Algerians entitled to vote is. Officially, it's 24 million, but there's been no independent assessment. Secondly, the electoral roll was uh, updated in the last few months, but we have no idea whether all those Algerians entitled to vote have had their names put on, on, on the electoral roll. Thirdly, it was announced a few days ago that anybody could turn up in a polling station and with his identity card, and if his name happened to be on the list, he could vote. This is the first point. The second point is that a number of people who've been voting are very funny people. In Algiers, you had queues of younger people who were in their 20s, no older people, no women, and some people, are, some observers are convinced these were military dressed up as civilians, but we don't mm. know. Thirdly, in Kabylia, and this has been filmed, some people, demonstrators, stormed polling stations and they found the, 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 the polling booths already stuffed with, uh, with, uh, with uh, voting uh, bulletins. Therefore, the urns have been stuffed in a number of places. So at the end of the day, we have no idea of how many people voted, 10, 20 percent, 50 percent, probably I would guess 20, 25 percent at most. We have no idea of what the real figures are. And then on top of it, we get one of the candidates announcing ex nihilo that he's got a majority of the vote. So the whole thing is a complete shambles. That's all one can say. Well, despite the, the, the numbers that we're looking at here and it being a complete shambles, we are certain that very few people voted. So you're saying potentially just 20%. I mean, regardless of the actual number, it's a really low number. Um, so where do we go from here it in terms a, of the legitimacy very, of this process? Is, well, I think one of the big problems of this election from the word go is that even if in a narrow legal sense, and even then some Algerian lawyers would question that, it is legal, it is viewed as illegitimate politically by millions of Algerians, whether it's 30, 50, mm. 60 percent, I don't know. But one of the most striking things in the demonstration since last February is it's not just young people who are 
uh, clamoring for democracy. You have grandparents, parents, children demonstrating together. So it's a broad cross-section of the population is sick and tired of a mm. system they consider immensely corrupt, immensely predatory. Billions of dollars have gone sideways in the last 20 years. Unemployment re remains high. And this is in a country where the level of education isn't bad at all. So we are in a huge state of confusion. And I don't see how the new president, whoever he is, will have any authority to enact reforms which are desperately needed or to indeed conduct the foreign policy of Algeria. We are in a turbulent region. So it seems to me we are just heading for more uncertainty. Well, within all of that uncertainty, Francis, it's really the army and its general that wields power in Algeria. So given the questionable legitimacy of this election, what's their next move from here? Well, we have to distinguish within the army. We have a group of generals, General Gaïd Salah, who is running the show and who was seen on television two days ago at the Council of Ministers literally lecturing, giving orders to an ashen-faced president and an ashen-faced prime minister. He and a group of about 12 generals are running the country. Having said that, there are a number of officers, including quite senior officers, who in private are literally crying of shame. They are despaired about their country. So I think the army will maintain its unity because that's absolutely fundamental. Mm -hmm. The army has until now had at least had the historical legitimacy of the war of liberation, but it, no, it risked losing that as well. So there are tensions within the army and the Algerians are very proud people like most North Africans, but the spectacle their country is giving to the world is one of ridicule. People are laughing, if not crying in despair. And there are many people in France notably, where millions of French citizens of Algerian origin are demonstrating in the streets of Paris mm. every Friday. Uh, many people are looking at this in absolute wonder what the hell is going on, because Algeria is the largest country in Africa. It plays an important role in terms of security in the region. And so we are in a, in a state of well, we have no authority and the generals will not be able to maintain. They can continue refusing to listen to the people, refusing to have an interim government of quality. Because one thing one must say, one often hears that the Hirak, the popular movement, has no leaders. Well, whenever people have emerged with a leading voice, they get slammed into prison. Mm. So this criticism doesn't work. Secondly, if one wanted, if the generals wanted to form an interim government, say, of six, nine months, which could put Algeria back on the rails and conduct free and fair elections, there's no shortage of former. There's a former prime mm. minister, Mr. Mouloud Hamrouch, who led great reforms in 89. He is a colonel. He would certainly serve for six months with other younger and different people. Algerian civilian society is rich in lawyers, in economists, in businessmen mm. who are of the highest caliber. And the great shame about Algeria is that here is a country with elites, let's say educated Indeed. class, which is remarkable people, but they are not reflected in the political, those who have the political power. And this is a situation that we will continue to watch very closely here on Al Jazeera. Francis Gilles from the Barcelona Center for International Affairs, thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera.